ever since Apple announced their new Vision Pro virtual reality, augmented reality headset, folks have been speculating about who's going to buy it, what it's going to be for, and the possibilities that it's hold. Today, let's talk about what it might mean for photographers, and I specifically want to talk about Photoshop. Apple's announcement of the Vision Pro headset focused on the augmented reality and virtual reality possibilities. The press and technologists who were able to take an immersive demo as it was announced got to see a show featuring any number of different capabilities and options with the headset. I have not used it personally, but as a photographer, from what I've seen, I want to talk a little bit about how photographers might end up using this with an application such as Photoshop. Apple is using the term spatial computing to talk about the augmented headset uh, computing environment that they're going to release in early 2024. And I think if we look at it as a computing platform, there's a lot of possibilities. Now, I'm going to talk about it today with Photoshop specifically, but you can insert your favorite image editor of choice into this video in your mind. And I think there are things that we haven't even thought of that are going to become possibilities, but let's talk about some specifics of what I think we can do today. So if we think about image editing interfaces, we've always had on our computers, we've had mice, we've had, you know, using the mouse for editing, we've had trackpads, which, you know, between the two of those, that's, it's kind of a personal preference type thing. Neither one of those is super precise. If we wanted more precision, we might use something like a graphics tablet. I actually talked about the latest version of the Wacom Intuos Pro in a recent video. I'll, I'll, I'll drop a link to that up above. And a tablet gives us precision that we can't quite get with a mouse or a trackpad. But with the Vision Pro headset and with Apple's new Vision OS, we have another editing interface that's going to become an option for us. And that is using our eyes. One of the constant refrains I heard from people who've had the hands-on demo with the Apple Vision Pro is that they couldn't believe how precise the eye tracking was. Now, Apple does this with an array of cameras in the device, including cameras that are pointed back in at your eyeballs to give you very precise eye tracking. And so instead of using a device or something in your hands to move a cursor around the screen, you simply look where you want the focus to be in the interface. And then you can, you know, pinch together to select. And that pinch together to select is the default gesture, but possibilities for other gestures, I'm sure will be coming. If we look at Photoshop and let's look at Photoshop here, I'll switch over to my Photoshop window that I have on my screen right now. And if I look at Photoshop, it's a busy interface. It's always been a busy interface and it's gotten busier over the years. In fact, Photoshop's interface is one of the steepest learning curves of professional software that I know about. People who are proficient in using Adobe Photoshop have spent many years learning the various tools and palettes and menu items and modifier keys and all of that. And that complicated interface is one of the reasons why I think Photoshop is a prime candidate for rethinking the interface paradigm with Vision OS. So in Photoshop, you know, I've got an image up here in a typical type of editing interface. As we all know, there are so many options in Photoshop. If I look at the window menu, for example, and I bring that down, you know, there are dozens of potential palettes and windows that I can show here. And, you know, we have some flexibility. You can put those on the side of the screen. You can, you know, expand one and, and drag it out and place it where you want. But you only have so much real estate, even if you have a very large monitor. And so I think the ability to take advantage of the spatial computing environment, which we know from the demos, means that you can use the headset to interact with applications on your Mac. And it essentially gives you, you know, as wide as your field of vision can become screen real estate. And so I'm imagining a world where instead of having my palettes, you know, over here on the right hand side or, or drag them out and put them somewhere else in my Photoshop interface, I'm imagining a world where those palettes could be 
off in some sort of a, you know, space. I could have my history palette over here up to the left as I look at my computer. I could have my swatches palette with all my brand colors, you know, over there on the right hand side so that I can, you know, turn my head or look over that direction and do what I need to do without cluttering up the screen, the area right in my main field of vision. Consider using Photoshop with multiple images. Right now, there's two ways that you can do that. One is by having lots of monitor real estate and having those images side by side. But again, even with very big monitors, we start to run out of room. If we expand not just looking at a monitor as somewhere I can put an image, but looking at my entire field of view, I've got a lot more room to work with. And the and the resolution of the Vision Pro means that I can look at those images at a quality level that's going to work great. And so multiple images are one of those areas where if I have you know four images up because I'm creating a composite or I'm using something as a reference image and I want to have a second image and make it look very similar, the ability to have that somewhere else in my field of vision at the same time I have my main interface in front of me brings up some great possibilities. I'm sure that the folks at Adobe are thinking about this, and I'm sure they're not the only ones. Photographers are rightfully going to wonder, how is this going to work? I mean, I will say myself, I personally was very skeptical of how precise could my eye tracking really be. But from hearing from and looking at examples from the Vision Pro demos that we've seen already, it sounds like the answer to that is very precise. Much like we can focus our eyes, you know, just a centimeter apart on two different things, and our eyes know intuitively exactly what we're looking at, the Vision Pro will have similar capabilities. So I'm excited about the possibilities of the Apple Vision Pro and what it's going to mean for photographers. I feel like this truly is an entirely new computing platform. I think this is on par with when we went from command line interfaces to Windows interfaces. And I realize that a bunch of people watching this have probably never used a computer without some sort of a windowing interface. It was a big change. Instead of typing everything, we used a mouse to click and drag and move things around. Now we're looking at a similar type of transformation. Instead of using a mouse or a trackpad or a tablet to move a cursor around, we're going to use our eyes. And I think we can use our eyes to give us interesting options when it comes to editing our photos. And so I'm looking forward to what's going to be possible with Vision OS with the Apple Vision Pro. Folks are freaking out about the price right now, I realize, but, you know, it's $3,500. This is the Vision Pro, which tells me that there are going to be Vision non-Pro devices in the future. But I think Apple brought this to market with uh, something I heard uh, Matthew Panzerino recently say, which is a minimum viable experience. This is the hardware required to make this a great experience. And as those hardware costs come down, I would expect we will see lower cost devices on the market in the future. Do I think you should give up your existing computing platforms and rush right out there and buy a Vision Pro headset just to use Photoshop? No, I don't. But well, I think the demos that we're going to see on stage, we have seen on stage, or we're going to see as further discussion happens, are probably going to be virtual reality games and, uh, you know, sexier things like that. Pay attention to the spatial computing aspects, because as a computing platform... As a photographer working with Photoshop or other similar tools, I think the possibilities to improve your editing interface, to improve your editing efficiency, they're going to be there. And I don't think this is going to take place overnight. I don't think it's going to take place in 2024, 2025. But I would expect by 2026, 2028, there's going to be a significant number of photographers whose primary interface for editing their photos is using a headset such as the Apple Vision Pro with software applications that take advantage of it. Adobe has a possibility to bring Photoshop into that mix, but this is also one of those big turning points where an entirely new player 
because they don't have the baggage of being a large legacy application like Photoshop, might be able to come onto the market, create an entirely new image editor that really outshines Photoshop on Vision OS. We never know. I think the market is ripe for disruption, and with this shift in computing paradigms, I think somebody could come in and potentially, you know, oust Photoshop as the best photo editor for Vision OS. It's an interesting time. I look forward to what's ahead. I invite you to go through that with me. Down below, you're going to find a link to sign up for my newsletter that I send out every week for photographers and talk about things like this. And as always, you know, subscribe to the channel, drop a like, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Do you think I'm full of hot air? Do you think this really is just going to be a fancy gaming platform? Let me know. I'm curious. Either way, it'll be fun to see where it goes. So go out there, have some fun with our old fashioned Photoshop and our old fashioned computers for now. And we'll come back later and take a look at what's ahead. And until then, take care.